And we begin with Hong Kong, where a day after the police used tear gas, pepper spray and rubber bullets against demonstrators, thousands have come out again onto the city's streets. And these are live visuals coming to you straight from Hong Kong, where well into the dark of night, protesters continue to stay on the streets with riot police ready to deal with any untoward situation. The demonstrators uh, yesterday had taken to the streets to demand action over an attack a week earlier by suspected criminal gangs known as triads. Mysterious masked men had attacked the pro-democracy protesters at a central train station in Hong Kong. Mass protests in the former British colony of Hong Kong over the proposed extradition bill are now in their third month. The seminous clashes between pro and anti Beijing factions are increasingly turning ugly. Mass protests have become a regular weekend activity for the residents of Hong Kong amid public resentment over police violence. The seminous Hong Kong's leader, Chief Executive Carrie Lam's failure to address the unrest continues. Our correspondent Patrick Falk, who is in Hong Kong, joins us live here on this broadcast. Patrick, talk to us. Uh, three months, uh, eighth or ninth weekend of continuous protests in Hong Kong. Yeah, that's right. But things have been rather different today. It's been incredibly tense here at in Central. There was, of course, a, a protest that was uh, planned to take place from Cheta Garden to uh, Sun Yat-sen Memorial Garden, which is just to the right of me. And uh, there was all, always that possibility of protesters uh, trying to move on to the Beijing Liaison Office, where they vandalized the place uh, last week and, of course, prov provoked uh, Beijing in, in doing so. But the protesters were here uh, just about an hour ago, and they've been pushed back by uh, the police who fired several rounds of tear gas and rubber bullets and uh, the situation was incredibly tense and the police have been advancing very quickly indeed determined to keep them uh, well away from the liais liaison office and I think that's an indication of just uh, how important uh, a symbol uh, the liais liaison office is. It is the highest authority uh, of the central government in the city. Patrick Falk reporting live from uh, Hong Kong. Uh, Patrick, uh, the, the latest protests now are not just against the extradition bill. They're clearly a protest against the way the police have handled the protests so far. And they're clearly trying to send a message uh, to China because these latest anti-extradition bill protests have now included uh, other issues uh, like Xinjiang as well. Well, I think it's fair to say that some of the protesters are certainly trying to send a message to Beijing. I mean, some of the protesters out here are genuinely uh, marching peacefully and don't necessarily want to provoke the central government, but those that uh, are doing so are challenging Beijing's authority. And as you say, this isn't uh, just about the extradition bill. A lot of this is about uh, the way that the police uh, have handled things over the last couple of weeks. First of all, we had that uh, attack that took place uh, last Sunday when the police failed to turn up for at least half an hour to defend them. And then yesterday in Yunlong, of course, there were some violent scenes that, that took place there and a lot of people questioning uh, whether or not the police really needed to take the action that they did. But uh, I think the, the wider thing that people are really fighting for here is uh, universal suffrage, which is, of course, uh, what the 2014 umbrella protests were originally about. And people see that as the root cause of the problems and see that as uh, what's uh, most needing to be changed in order uh, for there to be peace in Hong Kong. Right. Patrick, I was asking about the message to China because earlier this month, protesters had stormed the legislature building, vandalizing the structure and spray painting slogans. On top of it. Six days ago, protesters aimed straight for the Chinese seat of power in Hong Kong, the Chinese representative office. They blackened the emblem of the Chinese government, hurled eggs and paint bombs at the building and threw poles at the police personnel who tried to stop them. Now, uh, Patrick, in the eighth week of the protest, uh, it's clear that Hong Kong is raising a voice for something that's that's much bigger. Uh, they, I don't think uh, uh, they're they're having faith in the entire one country, two systems principle anymore. 
Well, look, I think the demands have been fairly consistent. I mean, of course, we've talked about this universal suffrage issue, which is an issue which has uh, been persistent in the past as, as well. Uh, but uh, look, I think that what a lot of people in Hong Kong, or the way they see it, is that they want one country, two systems to be uh, respected in the shape that it was designed. That a lot of people uh, don't feel that that's the case right now. Since 2014, there has been uh, a sort of throttling of the the sort of democratic movement in, in Hong Kong, if you like, uh, and uh, some pandems have been jailed and uh, their voices uh, have been repressed. So uh, th- there is a lot of frustration in Hong Kong among people and uh, people do want change. Patrick, we also had another um, activist uh, being arrested today uh, as well. If you can tell us what's the latest you're picking up on that front. Yeah, well, that's right. Max Chung was among 14 people arrested today. In fact, Max Chung was the organizer of yesterday's uh, rally in Yunlong. Like uh, today, the uh, police put some restrictions on uh, the pr- protest taking place. They were allowed to uh, come out and gather in Cheta Garden, which is where the, the protest began today. But they w- weren't meant to be advancing to uh, a Sun Yat-sen Memorial Gardens, which they were always going to do. It was obvious that that was going to happen, particularly after yesterday. The the protesters were told not to gather in, in Yunlong t- at all, but uh, you know they they were prepared to defy that order and came out in, in great numbers. There were as many as 200 people that, that came out yesterday, and I think uh, that just goes, just goes to show what a uh, what a sort of a breakdown in in relationship there's been between uh, authorities and protesters. And meantime, the government, the local government here, really hasn't gotten a grip on things and seems to be uh, laying low and just hoping things will b- blow over. Patrick Falk reporting live. Patrick, stay with us. We're getting uh, more and more live visuals from all over Hong Kong City of uh, things being set on fire this time around. Situation remaining extremely tense even after eight weeks of protests. Uh, the protests are into their third month and we couldn't remind our viewers any more about this. And this is the third continuous day of protests uh, uh, this weekend, particularly demanding both the complete withdrawal of the extradition bill and for the police to be held accountable for the apathy and inaction that they've shown, especially after videos emerged of mysterious masked men attacking pro-democracy protesters in the central Hong Kong station. And we're continuing to bring you live visuals of Hong Kong today, tonight, where things are as they were eight weeks ago. Rubber bullets are being fired, tear gas is being used to disperse the protesters as protesters continue to vandalize and set things on fire as well. Well into the night, the third continuous day of protest in Hong Kong continues as another weekend is gripped with tensions in the island city. Just yesterday, nearly 300,000 people protested. And then there's a ban issued by the police on protests and defying the ban, these protesters have come out onto the streets of Hong Kong again. These protests, which have raged on for over eight weeks now, have challenged China's authority over Hong Kong, and the city-state has been embroiled in its worst political crisis in history. And these are live visuals coming to you straight from Hong Kong. As we speak. And the latest round of protests are all about the police inaction and the police brutality on pro-democracy protesters.
Angus, which began 72 hours ago, continuing unabated. Now we understand the protesters are setting fire to piles of cardboard, even as tear gas has been used in a particular area to disperse the crowd of protesters by the police.